Hey folks, this is Mike from KEI Fabrication. This is my LS swapped Mazda V2200. If you're new to my channel, go back and check out some of the modifications we've done to this to make it a road racer, a circle track racer, and a drag racer. It's in the process of undergoing some more transformations. You'll see updates on that soon. Well, folks, we had a little uh, delivery today from the steel supplier. It's the first time this has happened in a long time at my shop because I've been ordering it through somebody else because the quantity was limited. I wish this project was for something real exciting, but I'll bring you up to speed when the recipient of all this stuff shows up. Okay, so what we got here is a fairly large project. Probably more than I really wanted to take on at this point. But this is a friend of mine and he purchased this truck brand new and this body brand new. When he put the chassis and body together, the dealer for the body, this is the only one they had in stock. It was a landscaper body. They use it for scrapping heavy metals and Amazingly enough, because he takes care of his equipment, the body lasted 10 years. So um, my job is to kind of convert this from a landscape body to something more in the lines of a dump body that can handle heavy metals, rotors, rear ends, engines, those kinds of things. So the landscape body by design is supposed to be user friendly in terms of loading and unloading materials, equipment, and so on and so forth, so the sides were removable. And uh, that um, semi-permanent arrangement just lends itself to tearing itself apart when you're using it for things it's not intended. So we're going to kind of re-engineer this a little bit. We're going to remove the temporary siding and actually discard it the verticals are going to be replaced with box tubing and stitched into the rails down below and a big horizontal cross member that'll go back and this corner post is actually going to be changed in uh, size and material thickness and we're going to tie it in to a brand new cross member that goes across the back and I'll show you the reason for that in a moment so one of the goals of the project here is to address some of the issues that have happened as a result of the sides flexing in and out. You can see it's kind of damaged the side rails of the body, but these side rails, at least from the very beginning in the front all the way to the rear, are in pretty good shape except for the last foot, and we'll address that in a moment. So we're going to actually do permanent vertical supports here, as I mentioned with box tubing and that box tubing is going to get stitched in uh, to the structure underneath and restore some integrity to what was formerly the stake pockets and um, there's some further enhancements we're going to do to actually reinforce this rail to prevent this from happening and any further progressive damage so let's talk about the tail end of the truck well, this is the end of the truck that takes all the abuse as the heavy metals roll towards the rear. They bounce off. It's the first thing you set heavy stuff on with a forklift or any other way that you're loading. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but the back of the truck, the last 12 inches, has kind of caved and folded down here. And um, I'm just going to move the camera angle and show you why. So this truck has 8-inch high channel iron vertical supports here that run forward and that's what the hoist is connected to but from the connection point of this body all the way out the only strength that has from that very strong vertical 8 inch channel to the outside is this formed sheet metal and as the heavy loads and stuff and particularly the corner post gets damaged or bent or flexed you can see that even the holes in the tail lights 
that were the holes that were created to mount the taillights all around it is collapsed and buckled because of the strength that's removed so the only real connection to these corner posts which take a tremendous amount of abuse is this sheet metal shape from here to here and we're going to re-engineer that and put a very strong horizontal structure that when we cut out the holes for these taillights to go in it's not going to take away the integrity of that structure and still tie in this corner post it's going to be completely replaced the rear door is going to be reconstructed I've got some expanded metal uh, and some angle iron and box tubing to kind of recreate that and make it survive this particular design again it wasn't designed to be dumping heavy metals um, you know some light construction materials soil those kinds of things are what these landscape bodies were designed to do the fact that this has last this long is really a testament to the owner and taking care of his equipment uh, however damage happens especially when you're dealing with heavy metals and you have uh, different employees driving your vehicle they don't treat them quite as well as you would treat them yourself so this has no horizontal support here at the bottom anything that rolls around in the gate smashes against it pushes it out deforms it causes all kinds of problems with the hinges and the closing mechanism so we're going to re-engineer the rear gate as well and as we walk around the body you can see all kinds of damage that has been temporarily repaired uh, as a result of having really what needs to be the strongest portion of the body uh, fairly weak in this situation again no fault of the designer of the body. If this was a landscape body, it'd probably still like, like a million bucks. The owner had no choice to get this truck in the business and start making money for him. Purchased this body. It was the only one available. And he got 10 years out of it. So it served him well. He looked into replacing this body. And between the repairs that I'm about to make and the materials that we purchased which I showed you a couple days ago um, all of this material is to reconstruct this body um, we're gonna again as I said I've used the word re-engineer that's kinda what's gonna happen here um, we're gonna really increase the integrity of the back of the body and we're going to increase the strength of the the part of the body that is horizontal that supports all the load and how the sides are grafted into that is actually going to strengthen the whole side. We're going to make a vertical structure, a vertical wall that is going to be integrated into the body and it'll really increase the strength and the capabilities and kind of prevent the damage that he's been chasing with this as the body gets old and fatigued. So step one it's going to be to remove all of the things that we are no longer retaining and then I just have to start with the reconstructive surgery I really got to get in here and cut away this sheet metal take some measurements of where the tail lights are supposed to be put back in and I'm going to also put there is no structure tying the left side to the right side of these vertical channel irons you'll see those when I remove this sheet metal and we're going to put some very very strong box tubing in there to connect the two sides together and then we can use that as a foundation to extend the wings if you will of the left and right side of the body so again I am a fabricator I am a welder this is pretty straightforward stuff there's really not a lot of creativity here except for the re-engineering aspect of the body just incorporating some shared strength methods to uh, to get this thing to survive another 10 years and the end result the investment the person is going to have in this truck it's going to be about one quarter of the price than it would cost to replace the body so hopefully uh, I may not do everything according to how you folks would do it it's the method that I chose the mess the customer appears to be happy with it's just up to me now to make that vision come a reality so here we go
Fight all the women and children. Well, that was the easy part. try some of these Bruler cutting wheels. Um, I bought them off of eBay but I ordered them because they were made in Germany instead of China. So we'll give these a try. I'll give you a full report.
Okay, just like any job that involves rust repair or uh, damaged fabrication repair, you got to get rid of stuff that's damaged or lost its integrity and you have to get back to some point at which you can add material in and then put some foundational pieces in and then build it back into a, into good condition. So this is kind of what we were dealing with is the very end of the bed which takes the most abuse was made out of probably 13 gauge I didn't measure it um, could be 12 gauge but um, that's all it was was sheet metal there was no reinforcement behind it um, anytime they might have backed up to something it was it was pushing it in and damaging it and eventually both ends got completely destroyed so this was here, obviously, you saw me cut it away. So my plan is to, this is the factory edge where the rear most support or cross member for the body exists. My plan is to notch this down and put some two by two, excuse me, two and a half by two and a half box tubing into this area. I can make this the transition from the bed floor to the cross member that I'm installing. That cross member is going to be solid, 3 16 wall material, good rugged material, and come all the way out to the end. And then that is going to be the plane in which the rear of the body starts to get reconstructed. I'm going to put 2x4 box tubing in between here, underneath the 2.5 by 2.5, and, a half by two and a half, that was never here before. The strength between the two horizontal bed frames uh, for the tilt body never had anything between it except for the sheet metal and this sheet metal. This is actually uh, an L bracket. It's not even a full section. So I'm going to replace the tail end of the bed with box tubing that's super strong and take the abuse and act as a foundation to tie the left and right horizontal cross members and then extend all the way out to pick the vertical tubes up where the tailgate and everything is going to attach. So my first installation of structural material is going to be a full width two and a half by two and a half three sixteenths wall box tubing. That'll be fully welded across here, and that'll begin where the, um, the structural cross members, 2x4 tubing is going to be welded into the bottom of that. So what'll also be, cap I'll be capable of doing when that 2x2 two two box tubing is in position, the nose of the radius of the box tubing will provide a nice fillet weld between the bed floor and the transition to the box tubing. And then I can go in and stitch this wall here, uh, do a couple inches of stitch welds across and actually increase the integrity of this component as well and tie the back of this thing all together. So in the end, I want it to be this back here needs to be the strongest component of the whole body so the vertical supports and the tailgate hinges and everything else that are going to be a part of this retrofit has some integrity and all of the issues that was normally a problem with more or less a sheet metal constructed body with things being bent and out of position, the tailgate never closing properly or getting um, needed to get weld repaired and patched up continuously. So that's the plan. I'm going to um, cut my piece of tubing longer than it needs to be so I can tweak it to fit it properly. And then I'm going to go in and knock these down so that 2x2 two two box tubing fits perfectly and I can weld both the inside and the outside of these vertical sections and tie them into the box tube. So that's my plan. Um, I'll let you know how it works out.
All right, so I've got it trimmed back and I'm putting my first piece in. And I have fully expected this, but I don't know if you folks can see it or I can give you the opportunity to see it, but between the two um, vertical channel iron, the bed itself dips below the box tubing. And out here on the ends, you can see that it comes up above it and it does that on both ends except when it gets way out to the end it dips down and I, I knew about that because this corner of the bed the post was twisted pretty bad and it dropped the corner of this so what I'm going to do is um, take that piece back off it's just sitting up there and I'm going to go under the cross member that's still under the truck and um, Put a piece of box tubing across here with a little bottle jack on it and jack up on that body and what I think if I push up in the middle the two ends will come back down. Alright step one in correcting this bow in this bed is this rail was never attached to the vertical structure so I'm gonna I clean this all up I'm gonna put a, a horizontal bead uh, on both sides and then I'm going to put a little platform in between here and put a hydraulic ram in here to push up on this and uh, try and track exactly how this thing is is going to straighten out so I can keep track of what's happening out on the ends in the middle so here we go Okay, so I was able to use my little port of power and a hydraulic ram and push the center of that up. And it actually came out pretty good from the left all the way over to almost all the way to the end. And when I put my new cross tube in, I noticed that this end has dipped a little bit. Which, as I said before, I knew about because it was obvious with that vertical post in this corner that the gates and the hinges and everything were attached to it was noticeably down well I've got to add some additional hydraulic power here and I don't know if you can see it but there's actually a buckle in the rail back here where my finger is so I'm gonna actually get my floor jack put a post under this put some tension on it and from this access that's available because the marker light used to be there I'll uh, drive drive it with uh, something and uh, a sledgehammer with a drift and I'll try to get this so it raises back up and then once that's completed um, I can put this rear cross member in that I've roughed in and um, then I can start working then I can start working on filling it in between here and here with some additional box tubing and put the provisions in the rear bulkhead if you will for the um, marker lights, the triple center marker lights, and, um, and then I'll work on the wings that come off and put the holes in that material for the rear turn signals and brake lights. Like it. 
see what it looks like with the cross member in place. Okay, it came up a lot. It's only down maybe uh, less than an eighth of an inch. So I think if I tweak it a little bit, you can see this cross member is really staying in shape all the way across and I can stitch all this in, tie the bed floor into this connection, which it never was before. And instead of having just the sheet metal area here that does all the work, we'll have 3 16 wall box tubing. Once this is in place and the bed is stitched in, now I can put the vertical posts in that come all the way down, pick up the wings off of this that'll go in next, and that'll give that vertical post some resistance to bending to be able to handle the weight of the hinges and the tailgates. A little more tweaking. We're almost ready to tack this in place. Okay folks, I'm going to use this as a stopping point. This video is already running way too long. So my point in this portion of the video is to give you an introduction to the project, get through the disassembly, and then start some of the reconstruction. And then now where the next video will pick up, as you can tell, we've straightened the body out, solved a lot of the issues, and now we can begin to put new material in. So the next video, you'll be able to start us, see us start heading in the other direction. Instead of going further apart, we'll start putting new material in. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next segment of this video and see how we transform this dump body from a complete wreck to something that's strong and going to serve the customer well.